so glad you have joined us today. As we head into the countdown, please comment, tell us where you're joining from, and don't forget to hit that share button. After the countdown, we're going to go into a time of worship and a word. Church, it is so good to see you this morning. I'm uh, so glad that you could join us. Well, this morning, before we get into a time of worship, I'd like to read a scripture for you, and it is found in um, Isaiah chapter 60. And I'm going to read from uh, verse 1 and we'll see where we'll end. Okay, Isaiah chapter 60. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord shines over you. For look, darkness covers the earth and total darkness the peoples. But the Lord will shine over you and his glory will appear over you. Just those two verses. Wow. Arise and shine. Yes, it may look like darkness is all around us, but the Lord says, Arise and shine because His glory is coming over us. And that is just so exciting. We are in this new series of new levels. We are excited for where God is taking us because God, He never fails us ever. He never fails. So even when we are not seeing what He's doing, He is still doing something. So I want to welcome you. So before we even get into a time of worship, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that, Lord, you are asking us to rise and shine because your glory is over us. And so we receive your glory, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we know, mighty God, that, Lord, you are working things out for good. You're working things out for good, oh God. And Lord God, we are yet to see that which you have for us. And we are excited for that which you have for the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, E3 family. Good morning, everybody. As we enter into a time of worship, I just want to remind you all that God is the way maker. No matter what situation you find yourself in, always trust and believe that God will come through for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Work. 
worship you. I worship you.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name this morning because of who you are. You are God who is our Father. We love you this morning. We appreciate you for the many blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you for what you are doing in our lives. We thank you for what you're doing in our families, in our church, in our nation. This morning, Father, as we come before your word, we ask you that you glorify your name. That which we do not know, Father, teach us. That which we are not able to do, empower us, O oh God, by the revelation of your word and give us access to that which we are not able to possess. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you this morning for your word. We receive it with thanksgiving in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to E3 Church. To all those that are joining us online, uh, our E3 family, our guest, you are welcome this morning to our worship service. What an awesome time of worship that we have just had. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm Pastor Lisolo, lead pastor of E3 Church in Columbia, Maryland. And I am delighted this morning to continue with our series, New Levels, New Levels. And so this morning, without wasting much time, I would like to take a few minutes and drop some nuggets that I believe will help us in reaching out for new levels in our personal and spiritual lives. And so I want to invite you to join me as we go to our text, Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 20 to 21. New levels is our title, new levels. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. That is our theme text to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. We have been in a series, New Levels, and our goal in this series is to discover nuggets or keys that would help us to experience new levels in our personal and spiritual life, in our personal and spiritual lives. And so we began in session one by looking at the key of desire. God is inviting us to desire everything that he has for us. And then last week, we looked at the key of revelation, understanding what God is doing and understanding how we can partner with what God is doing in our lives. Today, I want us to look at key number three. It is the key of working smart. The key of working smart. Join me as we go to our second scripture for our discussion this morning, Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 15 to 16. This is so profound and so powerful. Listen to me. This scripture sounds so simple and yet not obvious because within this scripture lies the fundamental key to being elevated to new levels in our personal and spiritual lives. The Apostle Paul has been speaking, to get the context of this scripture, has been speaking to his disciples, the church of Ephesus. And when he gets to 15, listen to what he says to them. He says to them, because I'm positioning you to go to the next level or to the new level that God has in store for you, I want you to catch this. Let's pick it up in verse 15. The Apostle Paul is speaking. He says, be so be careful how you live. Be careful how you live. Do not live like fools, but like those who are wise. But like those who are wise. Verse 16. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. 
Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. But understand what the Lord wants you to do. Very interesting. The Apostle Paul says to his disciples, be careful how you live. I want you to underline the word live. He's not saying be careful what is happening. He's not saying be careful with what you desire. Here he's saying be careful with how you live. So it's about life. It's about living. How we live. Be careful how you live. The big question this morning that I have is what is life? What is life? One time Jesus spoke it from his mouth and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus says he is life. What is that life? In another instance, Jesus says to his disciples, I have come that you may have life and have that life more abundantly. Kind of gives us a clue that God's interest for us is to have life. But what is life? What is life? You know, by the grace of God, my dad went to be with the Lord slightly over a hundred years. Slightly over a hundred years. My mom is still alive and she's working her way towards that hundred. But when I look at my dad's life, I feel like it was so short. And I feel like if only I had another 30 years with him. Yes, we are talking of over 100 years. And I think one of the things that informs my desire and my thought to have that extra 30 years is when I read the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament informs us of people in the Bible that lived five, six, seven. 800 and even over 900 years a person like Adam who lived 930 years can you imagine Noah lived 950 years so when I look at my dad's 100 years plus days and it looks so short my big question is what is life what is life? Because it looks like his life was short and I still want more of it. What is life? Beloved, may I submit to you that life is not just the passing of time. You need to catch this. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is a collection of the experiences that we create, that we go through. Life is about experiences. The intensity of those experiences determine the levels of life. I want you to catch this. I want you to catch this. If life is about experiences, then it means if you have good experiences, then you have a good life. If you have a bad experience, then you will say you have had a bad life. Life is about experiences whether good or bad. So the Apostle Paul, in speaking to his disciples, he says, be careful how you live. Be careful how you live. Be careful how you live. I want you to underline two words that he uses in these three verses. He says, be careful how you live. And then he says, be wise. Wise. Someone said, be wise. Be wise. And then he says what? Make the most of every opportunity. Two key words. Wise and make. God is inviting us to a life of being wise and a life where we make things happen. Which means God is inviting us to participate in the experiences of our life. In creating the experiences of our life. And that's what we call working smart. Not just working hard, but working smart. So the Apostle Paul says, be careful how you live. Make. Someone said make. 
make the most of every opportunity. Don't miss the word make. Because in that word make, God is inviting us to participate in creating this life of new levels. He says there is, a, there is a level at which I work in your life and there is a level at which I'm inviting you to participate in order for you to reach where I want you to, to go. The best illustration that I would like to give and that takes me to our third text is from the life of Jesus. So I want to invite you again. Let's lean towards the teaching of Jesus to understand how we can work smart in life and have better results and have life of abundance. Mark chapter 6 and verses 35 to 44. I want you to catch this. Jesus was with his disciples. They had been teaching. And after teaching, they took time to go to the other side so that they could rest and the people just followed them because they had the words of life. And when they got there, Jesus continued teaching. And now we pick it up in verse 35. They had been with these people and he had been teaching throughout the day. Verse 35, I want you to catch and understand how Jesus explains how we need to work smart. Verse 35, it says, late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it is already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat for themselves. Send them away so that they can go and buy something to eat for themselves. Verse 37, but Jesus said, you feed them. With what? They asked would have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. How much bread do you have? Jesus asked. Go find out. They came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told his disciples to put the people and sit them down in groups on the green grass so they sat them in groups of 50 and hundreds. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up to heaven and blessed them. Then, breaking the breads into pieces, he kept giving the breads to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. They all ate as much as they wanted. Mm. And afterward, the disciples picked 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish and a total of 5,000 men with their families were fed. What a miracle. What a miracle. What an experience. Beloved, life is not just the passing of time. Life is about the experiences, a collection of experiences in our lives. And here is a great example of the disciples and the people that came to hear Jesus, together with Jesus, having an experience that today we can look back and talk about, in which Jesus performed miracles. I want us to use this passage as the backdrop this morning to catching three keys on how we can work smart to get better results in life. How we can work smart. Number one, if we understand this passage very well, we work smart by being wise and understanding how things work. So if we are going to work smart, we need to be wise to understand how things work. Why is that important? Because it helps us to know what to do. Beloved, look at this passage again. Here are the disciples and Jesus. They have been teaching. And now it is late in the evening. A need arose. I want you to observe that a need arose. And according to verse 36, the people were hungry. 
They had been listening to Jesus all day and now they are hungry and they needed food to eat. That was the need. Whatever would happen after this would either create an experience of a good life or a bad life. Am I talking to somebody? Look at the disciples' response. They turn to Jesus and say, It is late. Send the crowds away to the nearby towns and villages so that they can go and buy food for themselves. They didn't even know whether the people had money or not. They said, no, send them away so that they can go and find food for themselves. I want you to catch that the disciples' response to an experience that they were needing to create to have a good life was that of stepping back. They refused to take responsibility for meeting the need that arose out of their meeting. They said, no, we are not going to be responsible for them. Let them go and find their own food. Catch this, catch this, beloved. If we are going to work smart and get better results in life, we need to take responsibility for our lives. Nobody owes us anything. It is up to us. To connect with God. Partner with what God is doing on this earth in our lives to experience new levels in life. Nobody owes us that transition to new levels. We need to take responsibility. The disciples refused to take responsibility. They separated themselves from the need. Beloved, Whatever your desire is, remember, one of the first keys to experiencing new level is to have a desire. If your desire will be met, you have to take responsibility. You do not need to look to anybody else but yourself first. People might come and help you, but you are responsible for your life. Look at how Jesus responds to them. He says, what? You don't want to take responsibility. Then he turns to them. He says, you feed them. You feed them. He doesn't say, I'll feed them. He says, no, you will feed them. You saw the need and you will meet the need. Come on, somebody. God is inviting us to a place where we take responsibility for the things that are happening. One of the reasons why you have seen the need God has given you the revelation to see the need is because God wants you to arise and do something. May in this season be your season of arising and taking action, taking responsibility. I like one thing that the disciples did though. I like what they did. They turned back to Jesus and asked him, watch this, they turned back to Jesus Jesus says to them in verse 37, you feed them. And they turn back to, to, to him and said, with what? It might look like it was rude, but I believe within that is the key to working smart. Within that is the key to going to new levels. Catch this. We need to ask the right questions. We need to ask questions in life. Why? Because when we ask questions, we will find out what we need to do. Nugget number one of going to new levels, beloved, in working smart is us understanding what to do. What to do. And if we are going to know what to do, we need to ask questions. We need to take responsibility. May you in this season take responsibility and ask question. What does that mean? It means stepping out to find the answers. Stepping out to find the answers. Number two, how do we work smart? Number one, we need to be wise. Understand how things work. You see, to everything there is a system. There are, there are ways in which things work in life. In your career, there are ways in which things work. In your country, in your community, in your family, 
There is a system to everything. Our ability to understand how things work will open a door for us to experience new levels. Number two, number two, I won't be long. Be wise and always have a game plan. Why do we need a game plan? Because a game plan helps us not only to know what to do, but how to do it. Watch verse 38. Verse 38. Jesus asked them, how much bread do you have? He asked. Then he says to them, go find out. Go find out. What is Jesus saying? You need to have a game plan. What is a game plan? A game plan is a strategy that we employ to see the manifestation of our desires. God intervenes in our life to open, to unveil our mind so that we understand how things work and gives us ideas, ideas of what we need to do and how we need to do it. So Jesus tells them, number one, you go and find out. That's step number one. Number two, after you have found out, Jesus says what? Let the people sit down in their fifties and hundreds. I want you to observe that there had to be participation in the whole miracle. The disciples could not just sit back. The answer that they gave, let the people go out to find food, will not work. They had to get involved. They had to get involved. And the only thing they needed to do was to come up with a game plan, with a strategy. May God give us a game plan for our lives. May God give us a game plan for our personal and spiritual life. Beloved, life is about the experiences that we create. The experience that you create with Jesus will determine your eternity. The experiences that you create with your family will either give you a good life or a bad life. May God give us the grace to do something about it, to take responsibility, to develop a game plan, how things work, to understand how things work. But listen to verse 39. Jesus told his disciples to have his people sit down in groups on the green grass, and they sat down in groups of 50 and 100. Listen to me. The moment we step out and do our part, God will cause everything else to fall in line. The people were not going to sit in groups of 50 and 100 until the disciples did their part. God is calling us to do our part in getting to the next level. How will E3 Church go to new levels? By each one of us doing our part. How are we going to do our part? We need to have a game plan. How are we going to get that game plan? Firstly, we need to understand how things work. How things work. And then come up with a game plan. What is a game plan? It is those strategies, the ideas. Step by step plan of how to make it happen. Lift your right hand and say, Father, thank you for the desires that you have given me. Thank you for the vision that you have given me. Today, Father, I unlock my mind, my spirit to new ideas, to new ideas, new strategies in my life to make it happen. Come on, somebody. I will not sit back. I'll arise and take responsibility for my family, for my business, for my career, for every arena of life. Father, empower me. And finally, finally, I close now. So number one, we need to be wise. Understand how things work. Number two, we need to be wise and have a strategy, a game plan. And number three, and finally, I want you to see what Jesus did in verse 41. Jesus took the five loaves. 
And the Bible says these were 5,000 people plus their families, children probably and women were not counted. So 5,000 plus people, he took five loaves and the two fish. Watch in verse 41 what he did. He looked up to heaven and blessed them. There the miracle began to take place. So here is nugget number three. Commit your works to God. Working smart is not just working hard. It's working hard by the power of the Holy Spirit submitted to God. We need to invite God in what we do. Listen to Psalm 37 verse 5. I'm closing now. Psalm 37 verse 5. It says, Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Oh, Father, give us understanding this morning. He says, commit. Commit means look to God. It's one thing for you to understand how things work. It's one thing for you to know what to do and how to do. But you need God. To empower you. To give you the grace. That's why Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now to him who is able. <laughs> who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. We need God's supernatural ability to make things happen. If we are going to go to new levels. We need to call upon the Lord. Depend on the grace of God. He does not just say commit some of the things. He says commit everything. Commit everything you do. Everything, beloved. Can I define that? Everything means oh, Everything means everything. You're eating. You're going to bed. Your work. Your school. Everything. Commit everything. Which means... If we are going to go to new levels, we need to give no room to the flesh or to man. We need to depend on God. And then he says, commit everything you do to the Lord. That word Lord simply means master. We need to allow God to be master of our lives. You see, we can either be the masters of our life and we are going to struggle. And to be honest with you, we'll end up shifting responsibility to other people. But when we surrender our lives to the Lord who is master, then watch what he says. He will help us. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help us this morning. May the Lord help us this morning to go to new levels. Beloved, we need to commit everything that we do to God. How do we do that? By prayer. By trusting Him. He says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Verse 4 of this same chapter, chapter 37, says, delight yourself in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of of your heart. Verse 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. You will live. You will have life. When we place our trust in the Lord, we experience life. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is about a collection of the experiences that we have. The experiences we have with God. The experiences we have with one another. The experiences we have here on earth. That's life. Stop worrying about how many years you are living. What are those years doing? What do they mean? How are you impacting your generation? Are you impacting your community? Jesus only lives 33 years. And yet Noah and Adam, Seth 
they lived over 900 years. It's not the number of years. It's the impact, the experiences that you have. Jesus had one experience of going to the cross and dying for you and for me. And because of what he went through, today we can place our faith in Jesus and experience eternal life. Beloved, I want to invite you, if you are listening to me for the first time, the best place to begin is to surrender your life to Jesus. God wants us to work smart and not just work hard. There are many people today that are working hard, working up every day, doing a lot of work, and yet at the end of the day, there is no satisfaction. There's nothing to look back and rejoice and see the goodness of the Lord. God wants us to work smart. But it begins by surrendering our lives to him. So I want you to lift your right hand and say, Father, today I choose to surrender my life to you. I commit my ways to you. I commit my plans to you. Father, forgive me of my sin. Come and live in my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Be master in my life. I surrender all to you. Father, save me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Listen to me. If you made that prayer, Jesus has come to live in you. Now, together with everyone else, I want us to reach out to him and say, Father, help me today to understand how things work in my community, how things work in my organization, how things work in this arena of business in my life. Give me ideas. Give me strategy. Let me have a game plan to know what to do. I do not want to beat the air, Father. Help me to be strategic. Give me a game plan in the name of Jesus. Give me a game plan for my life. The dreams that you have given me, the vision that you have given me, the desires that you have given me. Habakkuk 2 says, write down the vision upon tablets of stone that they that run might read it and know which way to go. Listen to me. We need to take time to understand how things work. Say, Father, give me understanding. Unveil my mind. Give me revelation that I may see beyond the obvious. In the name of Jesus, I take responsibility for my life. I take responsibility for my family. I take responsibility for my children. I take responsibility for my community. Father, I am your vessel. You have planted me here to make a difference. In the name of Jesus, anoint me for new levels. New levels in Jesus' wonderful name. Be wise. Know how things work. Be wise. Have a game plan. Be wise. Commit everything you do to the Lord. And prosperity, new levels, shall be the order of your life. God bless you, and I'll see you next week. What an amazing, amazing experience we just had. Thank you all so much for joining us. If this is your first time, we would love to hear from you. So please fill out a digital connect card and you find the link in the comments. Hey, I hope you all have a lovely Sunday and see you again next week. Hey, E3 Kids, don't forget to join us today at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. Bye, everyone.